The first two interstellar visitors gave us a framework. One was a puzzling asteroid, the other a textbook comet. They set the stage for what to expect, but a new arrival, 3i Atlas, defies both. Preliminary results show that its coma is dominated by carbon dioxide, with far less water vapour than expected. This discovery suggests that interstellar visitors are far more diverse than we thought. Forcing scientists to rethink what's possible, the mission to understand this cosmic enigma is underway. An object from another star system is baffling astronomers, not because it's so strange, but because it's behaving in a way never before seen in a comet. Observations of 3i Atlas show that its comet-like tail is almost entirely dominated by carbon dioxide, with far less water vapour than expected. This discovery suggests that interstellar visitors may be far more diverse than we thought, forcing scientists to rethink what's possible. The first hint of this unusual chemistry came from the James Webb Space Telescope and the SphereX mission, both of which found that carbon dioxide was outpacing water vapour by nearly 8 to 1. For an object from beyond our solar system, this is a surprising result that forces scientists to weigh it against earlier benchmarks. The first two interstellar visitors. When the first confirmed interstellar visitor, 1i Oumuamua, was discovered, it drew immediate attention. Its high velocity proved that it came from another star system. Yet its light curve suggested an unusual, elongated shape. Most puzzlingly, Oumuamua's path through space showed a small, but persistent non-gravitational acceleration as it moved away from the sun, which resembled the effect of cometary jets. However, no visible tail, coma, or gases were ever detected. In plain terms, Oumuamua looked like an asteroid, but moved like a comet, a mismatch that placed it at the edge of known categories. Several hypotheses were proposed to account for this. Some pointed to exotic ices, such as hydrogen or nitrogen, that could sublimate without leaving a visible trace. Others considered a dusty surface acting as insulation for hidden volatiles. A few ideas even speculated about technological constructs. The consensus, however, remained cautious. Most astronomers treated Oumuamua as a natural object with unfamiliar properties. The key lesson was that an absence of gas or dust does not automatically rule out activity, and interpretations should remain tentative until evidence is stronger. The second interstellar discovery, 2i Borisov, presented a sharp contrast. Unlike Oumuamua, Borisov behaved exactly as expected for a comet. It displayed a clear coma and tail, and spectroscopic instruments measured common volatiles like water vapour, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide streaming from its surface. Its brightness and activity patterns mirrored those of long-period comets native to our solar system. For many researchers, this was important because it showed that some interstellar objects arrive looking very familiar. Together, these two objects created a framework for future discoveries. Oumuamua highlighted the challenges of interpretation when gas and dust aren't present, while Borisov represented the baseline case of an active comet with measurable outgassing. Rather than pointing to a single model for interstellar bodies, they marked out the extremes of what might be possible. A new approach to understanding Atlas. This framework set the stage for observations of the third interstellar candidate, 3, I Atlas. Early measurements made it clear that its properties could not be described as a simple midpoint between the first two. Its brightness, dust signature, and chemical balance pointed to a configuration that diverged from both cases in notable ways. This prompted a more deliberate and targeted investigation, especially with tools capable of probing gases too faint to see with traditional imaging. To understand why Atlas looks so unusual, it helps to look closely at the tools astronomers are using. Most people think of telescopes as giant cameras, but for a case like this, the real power lies in spectroscopy, which splits light into its components to reveal the chemical fingerprints of gases. Instead of producing a picture, spectroscopy creates a spectrum, a set of lines that identify the molecules absorbing or emitting light. The James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, is a specialist at this kind of measurement. Its detectors isolate narrow bands of infrared light, picking out even weak molecular signals. Operating in space gives JWST another advantage. 
Earth's atmosphere absorbs many of the same infrared wavelengths, so ground-based observatories can't cleanly capture them. This freedom from interference enables JWST to make precise measurements of gas composition. NASA's SPHEREX mission contributes from the opposite angle. Rather than focusing on small details, SPHEREX will scan the entire sky in near-infrared light, gathering low-resolution spectra for millions of sources. Think of it as producing a panoramic map where every point of light carries chemical context. For a moving target like Atlas, this broad coverage helps distinguish its spectral signature against the complex background of stars and galaxies. Early analysis of Atlas with SPHEREX showed a large, roughly spherical cloud of carbon dioxide extending outward, with models placing its size at about 348,000 kilometers. When their findings were compared, the picture that emerged was consistent even though their methods were different. JWST showed carbon dioxide lines stronger than expected, and water signatures that were much weaker. SphereX confirmed the same imbalance while mapping that immense spherical CO2 halo. Taken together, their results converged on a clear chemical pattern. ATLAS's coma was dominated by carbon dioxide, with far less water vapor present. A coma that defies expectations. At around three astronomical units from the Sun, Comets within our solar system usually behave in predictable ways. Sunlight at that distance is strong enough to turn water ice into vapor, which drives most of the activity. Water typically dominates the coma, while carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide appear in smaller, supporting amounts. Dust lifted by escaping gas then scatters sunlight to create a bright halo and often a long tail. This textbook model has held steady across decades of observations of dozens of comets, so it was the expectation when astronomers began monitoring 3I Atlas. A coma itself is a shell of gas and fine dust grains surrounding a comet, formed when frozen materials beneath the surface sublimate after exposure to the sun. In nearly every observed case, a comet's coma is brighter and easier to see than its solid nucleus but Atlas did not align with this familiar script. Instead of abundant water vapor, JWST detected that carbon dioxide dominated the outgassing. Model-derived mass loss rates suggested CO2 was escaping at about 130 kilograms per second, compared to only 6.6 .6 kilograms of water vapor per second. That means water output was only about 5% of the CO2 level. In perspective, Comets at similar distances from the Sun usually produce more water than carbon dioxide, or at least equal amounts. The Hubble Space Telescope provided another piece of the puzzle. Instead of a dust-rich coma with a long, well-developed tail, Hubble imaging showed a compact, roughly spherical envelope of gas and light with no extended dust tail. This suggested that, unlike most comets, Atlas displayed strong gas signatures but lacked the visible dust activity to match. Mainstream interpretation suggests that Atlas likely has an exposed, CO2-rich surface or layer that outgasses directly, carrying little dust with it. An alternative hypothesis is that the comet once had a dust mantle that eroded, allowing buried CO2 to escape freely. The brightness debate. Coma versus nucleus. At the center of the discussion about Atlas is a simple but unresolved issue. What part of the object is really producing the light we see? The brightness debate comes down to whether sunlight is mainly reflecting off the gas and dust coma, or whether the solid nucleus itself is the dominant source. These are not just different descriptions, they imply very different physical scales. If the coma is responsible, the nucleus could be small and fairly typical. If the nucleus is responsible, Atlas may be far larger than most known cometary bodies. The two main hypotheses can be outlined directly. In the coma-dominated scenario, the light mostly comes from fine grains of dust and ice that scatter sunlight while suspended in the surrounding gas. Even a modest amount of dust can create a bright halo that hides the nucleus, making the object seem larger or more luminous than it really is. The other interpretation argues that the nucleus itself reflects most of the sunlight. For this to fit, the nucleus must be considerably larger, possibly tens of kilometers across. The lack of strong dust signatures in observations supports this as a working hypothesis, but it comes with substantial uncertainty. When astronomers estimate the nucleus size, the results are highly dependent on models. 
the calculation hinges on albedo, the fraction of light the surface reflects. A dark surface, similar to many comets, would require a nucleus nearly 46 kilometers across to match the observed light. But that figure rests on the nucleus-dominated model and remains controversial. If the surface is much brighter, closer to 25 or 30% reflectivity, the nucleus could be only about 10 kilometers in diameter. What these examples show is that a small shift in assumptions about surface brightness changes the estimate dramatically. Pending direct detection of the nucleus, the exact diameter remains unresolved. What matters for the broader picture is that the scale of Atlas changes depending on which hypothesis proves correct. A dust-brightened small comet implies one formation path, while a massive solid core implies another, with direct consequences for how we compare it to Oumuamua or Borisov. To move forward, researchers are contrasting evidence from multiple instruments, testing whether the composite picture holds consistent across gas signatures, optical brightness and coma morphology. This cross-checking process is now the key to narrowing the uncertainty. Cross-checking claims. Across instruments, no single telescope can describe fully, so astronomers treat the study as a shared effort. Each instrument provides a particular kind of evidence, and the value comes from checking those strands against one another. This workflow has become the baseline for interstellar studies. JWST defines the chemical baseline, showing that carbon dioxide leads activity while water vapor lags far behind. Spherex complements this result from a different scale, mapping a vast spherical cloud of CO2 surrounding Atlas. This independent mapping served as a morphological confirmation that carbon dioxide dominates not only locally near the nucleus, but also throughout a very large coma. Hubble's contribution came in visible light, where its high-resolution imaging showed a compact halo and no extended dust tail. Finally, repeated monitoring tracks short-term changes, confirming that the strong CO2 output and weak water output are consistent behaviors. Cross-comparison makes individual datasets more reliable. For example, if Atlas had been studied with JWST alone, calibration limits and background noise could have exaggerated the strength of certain gas lines. When SphereX returned the same CO2 heavy pattern through a separate instrument design, confidence in the result increased. The fact that both point to the same chemical story makes the claim stronger. Hubble added another type of confirmation. By directly measuring coma shape and brightness distribution, it ruled out interpretations that depended on abundant dust. This meant that the two methods, spectroscopy and imaging, aligned in limiting the role of dust, despite approaching the problem from entirely different angles. The approach can be pictured simply, imagine reconstructing a statue not with one photo, but with multiple angles. JWST captures the chemical texture. SphereX outlines the surrounding halo. Hubble shows the surface outline and dust limits. Each by itself leaves large areas in shadow, but together they assemble a composite form that is harder to misinterpret. This careful, layered approach is gradually narrowing what can and cannot be said responsibly about Atlas. By working in this coordinated way, astronomers are defining a new standard for studying objects from beyond the solar system. The result is not a final answer, but a sturdier framework that separates solid evidence from open questions. Atlas makes it clear that not all interstellar visitors can be described by rules drawn from solar system comets, and the right answer will come only from multiple, independent observations and careful modeling.